Well, hi there, and welcome. You guys might be here today because you watched our video about five of the greatest pet lizards ever, ever, ever. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it right now. There's a, you can just click there, click that, watch it, come back here, and then watch about these super incredible lizards because these are blue tongue skinks. And blue tongue skinks easily could be the greatest pet lizard in the world. And I'm gonna tell you why. With peaches, the Maruki blue tongue skink, and blueberries, the northern blue tongue skink. On our scale, our five point scale that you may be quite familiar with by now, we give the blue tongue skink a score of 3.8 out of five. And that is gonna come down to our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. So let's start with handleability. For handleability, we give the blue tongue skink a score of four out of five. As you've noticed as I've been handling this blue tongue skink, honestly, once they get used to handling, they're pretty much like handling a potato, which is just marvelous. They just pretty much hang out with you, they sit there, and they skink around. They're also very smart and inquisitive and social, uh, not. They're funny because they're social with people in a way, at least they look like they're social with people. They hate each other. That's why I'm saying or not, because they hate other skinks. But more than almost any other lizards, it appears at least as though they crave attention sometimes. I don't know if that's really true or not, but they definitely do not mind moderate amounts of handling. They're also very unlikely to bite, which is a good thing because they've got a powerful little bite. They don't have sharp teeth necessarily, but their jaws are very powerful, but they don't tend to use them. They don't really scratch, and that pretty much just comes down to the fact that they've only got tiny little legs. Uh, other lizards that are as big as a blue tongue skink have big legs and big claws, and a lot of times they're fairly arboreal, which means they go up in trees and those claws are really sharp and they just tear you to pieces. These guys live down in holes, which is why they've got the tiny little legs in the first place. Their claws are very small and they're not going to cut you up, and that's very nice. One of the downsides is that a blue tongue could poop on you. They're a big lizard, right? That's a lot of body. They make a lot of poo, and you're not going to miss the fact that it just pooped on you. It will be a serious little turd. That is something to be aware of. Something I've noticed is once they get accustomed to handling, they seem to poop only when they're stressed, and so if they're accustomed to handling, that shouldn't happen. Additionally, they've got this big tail, and though I believe they have the power to drop this tail on their own, I know they do, I've never seen a blue tongue skink do it. I think if you dug and looked hard enough, you could find evidence that it has happened. I don't think they regrow it particularly nicely, but I've also seen a lot of people who, when they need to grab a blue tongue skink quickly, will use the tail to maneuver it into a position where they can grab it. I would not do that with very many lizards that could drop their tail. The truth is, they're just not gonna do it. Maybe as a baby, not as an adult. One thing that I just love about these guys, this isn't one of our categories, but they got this blue tongue. That's amazing. In fact, there's a lot of question about why they have this blue tongue, and one of the leading hypotheses is that it keeps it from getting sunburned. A lot of animals that spend a lot of the day with their tongue sticking out in the sun, like giraffes or a lot of snakes or blue tongue skinks, have got dark pigment on their tongue. My tongue is pink because I tend to keep it inside my mouth. When it comes to care, we give blue tongue skinks a score of 5 out of 5. These are honestly as good as any lizard this size is going to get. For starters, they're easy to feed. They eat a lot of things that are available at your grocery store. Things like ground turkey, vegetables, fruits, things that everybody has access to. Not everybody has access to feeder insects, mice, or, or some of the things that you need to feed to other reptiles. Blue tongue skinks, as long as you can get some, some vitamin supplements, and some calcium supplements, they're gonna be just fine with things that you buy at the grocery store. Love that about them. They need a very moderate temperature for their basking spot. It's something in the high 90s, which is very nice because a lot of reptiles need a basking spot that's considerably hotter than that. But with a blue tongue skink, a fairly normal bulb at a fairly safe distance is just fine to provide the, the warmth that they're gonna need. Their setup in general, is very basic in nature. I mean, they need a water bowl, they need hides, they need substrate to dig in. The enclosure needs to be large but not colossal. They're just fairly easy to care for 
And that's a wonderful thing. And in fact, when it comes to those things that you might need to house a blue tongue skink, we've actually got links down in the description for this video. They need fairly moderate humidity, but that is kind of species specific. That's one of the things that's a little bit difficult about blue tongue skinks is just that there are a lot of species available. We've got two of the best species, in my opinion, right here, which is the Maruki blue tongue and the northern blue tongue, and their humidity requirements are different. The Marukis need it a little bit higher because if you don't get humidity high enough, one of the worst things that can happen is they don't shed very well on their toes and that can constrict their little toes and then their toes fall off and nobody wants that. The last thing with care that is really important, and that's why I'm making sure you know about this now, is don't keep them together. They hate each other and they will tear each other to pieces. That's even if you've got, say, two females or a male and a female. If you've got two males, they will definitely kill one another. When it comes to hardiness, we give the blue tongue skink a score of five out of five. This is as good as a lizard is going to get. Um, really, they're just spectacular. They're easy to feed. They're easy to house. They need very moderate and reasonable temperatures. Everything about taking care of them is easy. They're not just going to drop dead on you. In fact, I have rescued some blue tongue skinks that were kept in really terrible conditions for a very long time, and they were still alive. They were much worse for wear, but they were still alive. So they're a very hardy lizard, which is always wonderful. The main thing I would advise you to watch out for is make sure that they're shedding on their toes so that their toes don't fall off. But those are really the biggest problems. As long as you're taking normal care of them, you're being attentive, you're feeding them, providing them with water and places to dig, they're going to do great. Availability is where the blue tongue skink starts to lose some points. We're giving them a score of two out of five for availability. Frankly, the reason that they can be so difficult to find is because they're amazing. They're amazing and they hate each other. And they're live bearers, which means that they, they give birth to a relatively small number of babies each season. And as a result, not very many of them are born and everybody wants one. So if you know anything about economics, you're going to realize that the supply here is not meeting the demand and prices go up. And so we're talking a few hundred dollars for these lizards. And that is if you're lucky enough to find one. The Australian species are not being exported from Australia. So the only ones you can get, uh, unless you live in Australia, are captive bred. However, if you find one in a pet shop and it's an adult, it's almost certainly a wild caught blue tongue that's not from Australia. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the blue tongue skink a score of three out of five. Really, the reason that the animal itself is so expensive is like we've already explained, supply does not meet demand. So the lizard itself is expensive. Everything else is very reasonable. In fact, you will probably pay less for the setup on your blue tongue skink than you would for a bearded dragon. Uh, it's just the lizard that costs a lot of money. And like I said, all the stuff that you would need for the setup, we've got right down here in the description. So go ahead, you can buy that right now and it won't cost you an arm and a leg, and I love that. The enclosure that they need should be large, but it doesn't necessarily need to be colossal. Not like something that you would need for a tegu or a monitor or really most lizards this big, because that is a big lizard, but it's a big lizard that doesn't run around a whole lot they're active, but they've got stubby little legs, and so their enclosure doesn't need to be huge, and that's very nice. Also, the lamps that they need are, are fairly simple. You just need to provide that moderate basking spot, and I would recommend also a UVB bulb. Some people say that you don't need one for a blue tongue skink. I would say better to be on the safe side with that one. Get a UVB bulb as well. And that costs something, but it's not bad, especially when you're talking about a lizard this expensive and this amazing. You'll definitely need to provide a water bowl that they can soak in. Uh, so that's going to be big enough that this big old lizard could get in there and soak a little bit. That'll help with that toe issue we were talking about before. And they're going to need substrate that they can dig in that'll kind of hold its shape. We've listed a few of those that you could look into down below. Overall, we give the Blue Tongue Skink a score of 3.8 out of 5. Even though we've had other lizards and other reptiles get a higher score than that, really where they got docked is just the fact that they're hard to find and they're expensive. Find one. There's no better lizard than this. They're amazing! And you will be so happy that you did. As always, like and subscribe. Check out our other videos. Comment down below. We want to hear what you thought. And we hope to see you real soon. I'm going to run through those one more time where I use my fingers. <laughs>
hardiness, availability, stupid hand, <laughs> alright, we'll try again. <laughs>